Here entails the story of a man who woke up on an island with no memory to how he got there and no memory of who he was. The sun was beating down on his face and all around was a vast ocean with nothing but blue for as far as the eye could see. He stood and gazed around while he pondered his issue and decided to get to work. And finding a way off the island, more importantly, place to sleep we had to stay a night or two. He hacked away at trees with his bare fists until he had enough wood to craft some wooden tools as he seemed to remember he could craft and forge with an array of materials which was weird as he couldn't remember his own name. So he kept hard at it collecting as much material as he could to start his plan into action. Knowing nothing of where he was, he worked throughout the day all along knowing that he may be the only person near this tiny island in the middle of nowhere. He decided to find out what food sources he had, as there was no way to know how long it would take to put together a seaworthy craft. But one thing was for certain, he had worked out throughout the day and it was time to find shelter, so he counted up the animals quickly to see his fate but found enough meat to keep him alive for at least a couple of weeks. So he gathered himself together and went to look for a place to build shelter. He dug into the earth with the tools he had crafted. He thought staying underground would be the safest option. He kept digging until he came across a type of ore. An ore his wooden pick was struggling to mine out. Ding! A light switches on. Hmm, my dear, he said to himself. And he rushed back up to his crafting area to craft a more sturdy stone pick with cobble and wood. He came back with his new pick in hand and went back to cutting out the ore from the rock. This is iron, he says. I must find a way to craft together some furnaces, he said, so that I can forge together some iron tools. He used his stone pick to carve out a portion of the rock that he used so he could get building some furnaces to forge an iron sword and more. He chose cobblestone and started placing the rock in a formation to create a furnace. Once done, he added his crafting area and got to work starting up the furnaces. They had only had wood and kindling, which would not burn long enough to forge all the iron tools he needed. So he forged a couple of iron picks, and hopefully he would have enough wood to cook some of the raw meat he had acquired earlier that day while counting the stock of animals on the island. Pondering who he was, where am I from, he thought to himself. Why can't I remember who I am? He felt angry and worried. As it became night out, strange sounds were appearing from around and he did not recognize them and neither did he want to find out what they were. So the best thing he thought was, I need to find coal. So he decided to try and dig deeper and find coal deeper in the earth. He kept on digging, but no matter where he looked, he could not find anything that resembled coal. He found some iron, loads of dirt, and loads of cobblestone that had no luck for coal. Little did he know that he was digging himself into trouble. There was a grave canyon with monsters within, which he did not know. He kept on digging and digging and digging. Little did he know he was digging himself to his demise, where various creatures from the dark night were howling around within a cave. He broke through the rock to see this ugly green monster. What could it be, he said. It came at him, he hit it, and boom! It exploded with a huge might. What was that, he said. 
What was that? He decided to try and build a path down so he could get down onto the ground. He was so scared and rattled by the huge explosion from this strange green creature. He placed a safe path, but then turned and noticed in the distance there was another creature. It wasn't green. What was it, he says? Looks like a skeleton. I had a bow and arrow. It tried to run at me, tried to put up a defence quickly, but it was too late. It had already started firing arrow after arrow. It hit him in the arm, so he decided to run to the back of the cave for safety. As he sat there wounded in the corner, awaiting the skeleton to come after him. It felt like time had slowed all the way down as the skeleton came towards him, thrusting arrow after arrow at him. Dodging left and right, he withdrew his sword out to only forge early that day and went forward to fight with a swipe left and a swipe right, fought with the skeleton and eventually, with one final swipe, beat him. And that was that. Soon after, he found what he was looking for. Finally, a bit of hope found the coal he was needing. Decided to take as much of the ore as he possibly carry so that he was able to forge everything he needed. He needed all the different tools and more importantly, he needed armor. He needed to be able to defend himself and be able to protect himself from these crazy creatures, these ugly monsters. Once he had collected the coal ore he needed, he worked his way back up to the hollowed out shelter. He placed freshly made torches he had bound together with coal dust and kindling to light up the area as all felt really unsettling in the night. Once lit and feeling safe, he got to work starting on his goal, which was forging some armour and the tools that he needed so that he could keep safe and he still had no idea where he was. He worked hard and crafted some tools and even a bed as he still had all the wool from the sheep he had taken from earlier that day. He still stood firm, still wondering about who he was. It puzzled him, but he kept hard at it and he placed his bed and cooked up more meat to keep his strength up. It took all day to nearly forge these tools, but most importantly his armour to protect him. He was unable to forge armour to protect his legs, but he did craft a helmet and chest plate with some protective shoes. He'd also hear, it sounded like, a dog. Could it be? Man's best friend is here? If this was true, he would have a friend. Someone to keep him company on his uncertain future. He grabbed some bones and from his chest he put on his arm and stood ready to go outside to find a rather panicking sounding dog. When he went out, he found the dog scurrying around in a frenzy, so he tried to feed him some bones, which the dog took in delight, but in a flash, something came clambering out the bushes. It was one of those green keetras. It hit it. I hit it again, but I swiped the dog. The dog got angry and lunged while the creature attacked. He was faintly wounded, and the creature then blew up. So sad by the attack, he slumped away onto the beach and bowed his head down in dismay. What will I do, he said. He knew he had to fix up the area, but he had no idea what he was going to do.